We've got the Hammer Club here, right there. <laughs> you probably made more people aware of that sonata than anybody in America ever did. <laughs> you did? Charles Schultz. that you know, whenever this piece is always is known for its uh, you know it's this fantastic quality of, of power and uh, and uh, massiveness you know. but of course it's also it's many-sided piece and the whole second subject starting with the the what do you know the, the arpeggiando place the, 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 all that leads into a place which is so full of detail and and wonderful chromatic nuances and so forth and I, I always feel that the uh, often I hear the piece played and uh, one usually hears the great powerful stuff but then the modulations of the delicacy are not often so much heard but I've been thinking a lot about the very strange chromaticism the chromatic element of this of yeah. this movement including yeah. that I mean in the second theme the way it suddenly goes yeah. and then well, that's things. the place. That's the place. Because okay. I, I mean, I consider that a, that in every in every movement of this piece, with my my, my uh, crackpot theories, uh, there seems to me a mystic mystical part. Hmm. In the first movement, it's exactly that we we just got to this. Yeah. Difficult as it is, I think there should be a certain kind of improvisatory freedom hmm. about. That it shouldn't be played, but and that also because mm -hmm. the, the because in the left hand you have this un everything else is basically much of the pieces is, is tonic dominant mm -hmm. or five ones four ones very simple harmonies. But here you have here you're going to a first inversion from this very strange voicing with a crescendo. So I feel this is like. A and and this has a kind of freedom as for violin solo. If this were, you know, and now very piano, mysterioso, mysterious. That's I'm, for me. This is this is the this sort of bottom of the of the piece. The the um the the low point. The low point of the vitality of the of the exposition, and here is the heart of the seems to me the the mysterious element in this piece, which is otherwise so incredibly granitic and seems logical. And, and you know, in the. In the um, Mrs. Alumnus, which he was working on at the same time, B flat is the key of war. Hmm. In the Dona Nobis Touch. At the end, right. Remember it? And the, the singer sings Dona Nobis Touch and give us peace. Mm -hmm. and, and the marking, Beethoven's marking, is angsty. Angsty? Fearful. Okay. Fearful. And that you have the trumpets and drums bursting out in the middle of the Dona Nobis. Really an incredible moment. Mm -hmm. And I always think of it here. incredible grandeur and, and um, importance of the first movement, this was like a parody, mm. or, or right. at least a, a, a somewhat ironic and, and uh, humorous, uh, rather, rather uh, sharp comment on, you know, another version of, uh, of, the, of the thirds. So right, that's why, why, why I think That's the way. That's the way I feel, and even the forte is not until you get to the the, uh, the, uh, the horrible explosion here. Yeah, something jack in the box. Yeah. Very scarcely, and then Dolce, and mm. then Dolce, and then Dolce. Yeah. So wh why do you think that he was 
juxtaposing these, all these crazy things. I mean, to have such slapstick humor next to the adagio. What's not extreme in this piece? Mm. I feel that it's more and more very important that the una corda, that Beethoven's piano in the una corda was really a different sound mm. and was really much more inside and much more introverted. Mm. And if one thinks about that, then one can play the opening of the adagio, the whole the, the basic tempo of, of the adagio, a little more moving than ordinarily, because if you think of it as being basically uh, almost for oneself, a very, a very um, private statement, a very in, in, inward statement. It's all basically in one color. Except the G major. Except the G major, which changes. You can if you want play a little slower if you want. You can play this a little slower than you played that or that. And then pick it up in the F sharp minor. So that's, oh, it's also in another realm, time. And then... This is like redemption. Just as you did it. And then... As before. By the way, I, I don't think that I, I have never been able to play that F sharp uh, esposivo. I think the esposivo belongs here. I, I, I think. And can be slow. As. Yeah, why not? I see. That's freer, the way freer, it yeah. is. Uh -huh. I mean, with Beethoven's Espressivo, it's also in the late pieces, so right, Espressivo, then at tempo. I think this is rounding out with this, un, with this um, incomplete sighing phrase, you know, and then, then you can start. But I think... It just dies away. You know? And what is this? I mean, this is, it's almost like a prelude. I've always felt, this is, of course, it, it's sort of, he's written about the evolution of, the evolution of the fugue, right? Mm. Starting with this sort of wabbling thing mm. that he has, and then he has the two-part writing a little bit more mean, formed. Yeah, yeah this like, I always think it sounds not only like the evolution of the fugue, but it also sounds a little bit like evolution, starting with, uh, you know, one cell deforms protozoa, without bones, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then a little bit more bony, a little bit more, yeah, and then full-fledged Bach, yeah, then vertebrates, vertebrates and Bach, <laughs> and then Beethoven. So he was a Darwinist, you say. <laughs> it's an amazing thing, um, but there's something a little bit also, as I said, willed hmm. about it. That I, now I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and, do that. And, and some of it is just absolutely amazing, like the Tranquil. He makes the piece submit to his idea in a way, and I, I wonder if that's related to also the way he was trying to, you know, get the courts to submit to his idea that, that his nephew should be his and not and kept but, from his mother, right? The, the, the element of will is very, very powerful. And also, he does, you know, at some point come out and say, you know, that power above all is important. Power. He was an extraordinarily moral man, but the, the, the part of him certainly was uh, the idea of power. Mm. You know? And, and um, you know, when he would improvise, you know, the stories about his improvising, reducing people to tears with his improvisation and then turning around and laughing at them yeah. for their, you know, wimpiness, you know? And I think the idea, you know, further, further, and the, the, the ambition mm. and, and the amazing ability to to be as radical and more adventurous. I mean, it's, it's extraordinary. <laughs>